Hey friends, welcome to the recordings from the Study and Work in America International Student eSummit. It was such an amazing webinar. I'm Rob, it was my privilege to help host this event. Uh, thanks for everyone who tuned in, and then for those who missed it, we're gonna be sharing these recordings to help you guys, to guide you on your journey, whether to study or work and get jobs here in America. So this recording is from UD's presentation. It's all about maximizing your campus experience as a student here in America and how to build your profile and portfolio to be job ready when you start looking for jobs here in America. Enjoy this video. What's up, everybody? All right, so for people who don't know me, I'm Pratesh, uh, but I go by UD. Uh, yeah, my channel goes by UDJ, uh, and I'm from Mumbai. Uh, all the people who are from Mumbai, hello, everybody. Kasakai. Uh, I, I did my undergrad from DJ Sangvi, uh, from DJ Sangvi Mumbai uh, in information technology. And then I, uh, you know, I had a job for around six months in Cap, Cap Gemini uh, as a software engineer. And then after that, I decided uh, to do masters. This guy right here, uh, uh, third guy in the photo, in the first photo. He's my best friend, Neville. He's the one who pushed me hard and he's like, you know what, we need to do, like he was doing masters and he's like, you, you guys, you need to do masters. And I was like, okay, let's figure it out. So I decided to do masters and don't do the same mistake. You gotta do a lot more research. And luckily you guys have a lot of us uh, talking and making this content. So you have all of this content. At our time, like 2012, I didn't have all of this content available, but now you guys have it. Uh, I came to Chico State. Uh, I had a lot of uh, admits. I had six admits, or four, or five or six admits, and some of them were NYIT, UTA, NJIT, um, and a lot of CSUs. I chose Chico State for one big deal breaker, and it's a uh, uh, the when I call international department and I ask them like, how's Chico State for uh, for international students and they said all great things about Chico and the community and all of those things. But then when uh, they, they said like, but, uh, you know, there's always this but. Uh, so they said that, hey, there's only six to eight master student, uh, Indian master students. So there's very less Indian population in Chico. And I was like, that's it. That's where I want to be um, because, you know, you, you get to stand out if there's not a lot, lot of Indian students. And, and that, that made my mind like I want to be there because that will help me explore the culture a lot more than just being around Indians because we're coming from India. So I wanted to explore a lot more. Uh, so that's where, and also Jigo State is very, very uh, least expensive. I, I, I guess uh, the fees was $7,000 for one semester. I had four semesters. 28,000, if you do the math, that time it was 60 rupees, like roughly around 18 lakhs, uh, 20 lakhs. Uh, I think so, that's that's if my math is right. And that's, that's very convenient. I'm from lower middle class family and you know, and a lot of you come from not like high, like we as a middle class family are like the very ambitious guys uh, and girls. Uh, so I that's how I made my decision of going to Chico State. Uh, and then now I'm, I'm a scrum master and a development team lead. I started as a project manager. So I did masters in computer science, but then I moved to project management. That's where I found my passion. Um, project management, I'm a people person. I love talking um, and I love making relationship. Uh, so I found my passion in project management and, and then I got a project management internship. Uh, then I became a project coordinator, got promoted to project manager, and now I'm finally a scrum master and a development team lead. For people who don't know what is scrum master, it's just a fancy name for project manager. Um, so that's what it, that's uh, that's me. Next, uh, I'm going to be talking. I forgot to tell when I was introducing. I forgot to say that I'm going to be talking about how can you maximize your university experience to build your portfolio. Uh, this is something I am truly passionate about and something I talk about in, in, in a lot of my videos. I don't know if you watch, uh, have you, if you have watched it or not. Um, I believe like not everybody's going to go to uh, top ranking colleges uh, and, and, you know, not everyone is going to have that luxury of brand and uh, top ranking colleges. So, so that's why I'm, when I was in Chico State, like I, I know a lot of you don't probably know what is Chico State or California State University at Chico. And it's not a top ranking college, but I decided to maximize my university experience and use the resources available in universities so that I can, you know, get full-time job and all of those things. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. 
that's my YouTube channel. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, go subscribe. That's that's a plug right there. <laughs> but uh, that's my YouTube channel. Oh, Harnoor is right there. You can see Harnoor and I talked about it. Um, I talk a lot about how to do. Uh, uh, basically, I just talk about what what I'm talking right now, and then some fun stuff. Get involved. So my first thing is going to be getting involved on campus. And before I talk about this, I want to also highlight that, uh, you know, I, I did my master's in computer science and moved into project management. I, com I still have a degree of master's in computer science. And I had a four job offers before I, when I graduated in November, like I, my graduation was December. And in November, I had five job, uh, four job offers. Uh, there was fifth one, but they were not sponsoring my visa, so I, I had the, I technically count four. Um, and all of my job offers are based on the things I'm going to talk about and how I built my portfolio and network and relationship. And a lot of uh, the presenters are going to be talking about that as well. Uh, I know Rob is going to talk about why online application is not going to be awesome and why you need to build your network. So my first point is going to be getting involved on campus. and. And here's a story time, right? Like when you go, when, when you will be going to your college, especially colleges like San Jose State, uh, USC, uh, UTD, those are the colleges where I've heard that there's 300 students in one batch or 500 or more than that. And everybody has the same brand. Everybody has the same university, same ranking and all of those things, right? Uh, so what are you doing something different to enhance, to stand out, to do something else? Uh, and, and that's why I feel getting involved on campus is the first thing you can do. And when I say get involved on campus, what I really mean is uh, there are so many clubs on campus, student clubs on campus. And student clubs, I would like to define it as like it's a own company, small startup company on campus. You know, there are a lot of clubs. Uh, uh, I was very passionate about meditation and yoga and I, I did not find a club on campus. So I started my club. You can see uh, there's a picture of that. I had many pictures, uh, uh, but, but that is when I realized that I can do something like this. And it gave me that entrepreneurship experience when people are saying like, how do I get experience? This is one of the way if you can be, you can be a leader of a club. If you don't want to take that responsibility, uh, you can also decide to just participate in the events. There will be tons and tons of events on campus. Uh, also free food will be there, like Harnoor says in uh, all of his videos. <laughs> so, uh, you, and that is your opportunity to meet new people and make your network uh, where people, if you just focus on your syllabus and your book and assignments and just, that's all you do, you know, you're always going to be in your comfort zone. But if you go to these events or leave something, then that's when you will get out of your comfort zone and, you know, build your network and relationship just like that. Uh, those are my pictures. I, I was a student president for Indian Student Club. I hosted two big events, uh, uh, three big events, uh, Navratri and Holi. You can see those pictures. 700, 800 participant um, uh, on campus. Uh, I get to speak in front of this. A lot of people, I just want to say that when I came to United States in 2014, six years back, I was hardly able to speak proper English. Like my English is not, was not as good as it is right now. It's still not good, but it's, it's okay. I can communicate now. And uh, I was very nervous. I had a stage fear. I, I didn't know how to talk and I, you know, those are the things which you guys also probably, most of you might have that and you don't know what to talk and how to talk in front of so many people, but putting yourself into such situation is going to build that leadership skills. Uh, so get involved on campus. That is my first uh, kind of advice to all of you. Second one is don't follow uh, herd mentality. In Hindi we say, uh, basically, you know, when I came to Chico State, I had eight to 10 seniors and, and though all of them told us, uh, like uh, we, our batch was the biggest batch. We had 60 students together in 2014. And all our seniors told us that uh, get, apply to cafeteria jobs. And I am not against cafeteria jobs at all. But as soon as uh, I realized uh, my first semester, when I took a couple of uh, classes uh, and assignments, I realized I don't want to do uh, software development, I want to get into something else like people management. And so I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm going to wait on to my campus job and find something different. So 
all my classmates applied to cafeteria jobs and they got it and some of them were housing some of them were in dorms some of them were you know making coffees and dinners and all of those things which is good you will get some form of income but i highly recommend there are so many on campus jobs available so i had an opportunity to work for student life and leadership as a student para professional uh, it's a fancy name for a consultant but basically i was a student consultant so what we what my job was on campus that we were using an app on campus called uh, orgsync and it's basically so my job was to train different university departments uh, and student clubs on how to use that app plus uh, if any department who haven't implemented this so they have to take this app and implement in in their department so i have to deal with what their process is what their requirements are and then modify it and then kind of implement it and then train the users to how to use it if you whatever i just said that's basically role of you know consultant business analyst project managers and that was my experience i was building when i was on campus so i did not have any project manager experience but this is a real experience uh, which i had similarly um, you know a lot of mohit is one of my friend you might have seen him in my videos uh, he got an uh, on campus job as a web developer uh, for uh, for our uh, college website so he he is now a software developer and those types of jobs are available one of my other friend got a, a job as a project manager for a mba department and you know, he got to travel a lot of places uh, for that department so there are jobs on campus which are like which will build your career so don't just uh, do what everyone else is just everyone is doing uh, you know try to do something out of box try to you know you know find go to every single department and give them your resume talk to them and talk to people what are other jobs available and you might end up getting something which might add to your resume you can if you want to become a web developer you can't say that i worked in cafeteria that will not count in your profile or portfolio but you can say i was a web developer for university and i developed websites for college website uh, university pages those are some real experience and my interviews in all my interviews i give examples of uh, my on campus jobs that i was a student para professional where i get to go to so many events and conferences and i train different departments so that's basically what i meant to say when i said don't follow herd mentality and do something out of box next one is participate in competition and conferences this is again you know everyone is going to be focusing on assignments getting a grades uh, you have to get about 3.0 gpa if you're doing a masters you have to maintain 3.0 gpa uh, 3.0 or above if you don't then you go into probation and they they can you know uh, uh, defer your admission or reject your admission so any ways you're going to do that with something else you need to do along with that and you know there are so many co competitions available for software developers for business case or project managers i i have attended myself lot of business case competition there was one of the competition hosted by deloitte uh, deloitte is one of the big four consulting firms and the competition was sap co innovation competition where they give you like a full fledged case case study and then you have to come up with you know your you know business analysis process um, so it's it's something you will learn a lot of out of it plus you will make so much of network uh, on that competitions and conferences when you go similarly i'm talking about project managers but i know harnoor itself he has gone to like 12 to 13 hackathons uh, there are a lot of software programming competitions so make sure you attend those uh, those are your chance to stand out and do something else uh, and again that is another opportunity for you to do something different other than what you will always be doing sitting in your apartment and doing your assignment so participate in a lot of competitions building relationship this is this is like my i preach this in almost all my videos i am a big big believer of uh, building relationship and network uh, this is going to take you a very very long time these are all the people i mean i i if i start putting pictures there are so many people i met uh, in conferences on my campus all of them are still in touch with me all of them uh, i hang out with i meet with them regularly they will take you very very long time so here's how it works i love to like to say like story time as right now in my department i manage a team of developers in in chico in united states i manage eight developers and then i also have a, a team in india in noida specifically with developers qa and release engineering team 
So when I manage them, uh, I also do hiring for them. Uh, I also hire. So how the hiring perspective works is now right now if we are hiring for software developer, if someone from my own company is going to tell me that, hey, I have this friend of mine who's applying for software engineer, who's applying, who's wanting to do software engineer and he's really good. Now, all of a sudden we got 500 application and this guy who's, who's working in the company who I know and he tells me that I know this person. These 500 people are just going to be like, you know, on wait list because now all of a sudden I can trust someone who already knows this person and have this, uh, you know, faith on this person. So tr like that, that is how, you know, job market works over here. Very, very, very important for you to build relationship. Now, I know uh, Rob is going to talk about online application, but uh, I applied to like 300 to 400 jobs uh, because when I was starting uh, my job search, I did not know all of this. I learned through my experiences and I applied to like 300, 400, 500 jobs and I, I got maybe 10, 20 responses. All my five job offers were through my uh, relationships and Here's how it worked for my Deloitte job interview. How I got my job interview, again, a story time. I love to say tell a story. So you see there's a picture of HR team right there on the left-hand side. So they, I met them in my Deloitte competition 2016. And, you know, I was, I follow all, I, and then I started following the HRs and, and the hiring managers. This is very interesting. So I follow them on Twitter. And I know I was keeping tab on them, uh, making sure that, you know, see what they have to say. And one, like I know Deloitte comes to my campus every year to do on-campus interviews and hire uh, business analysts and project managers. So they were coming and they were, there was a career fair and they were coming. So she texted, she tweeted that uh, super excited to be on Chico State campus. So I took that tweet and I, I DM'd her on, on Twitter saying that, hey, you know, it was awesome meeting you. And then I sent her the photo, like I learned a lot from your session and things like that. Um, basically a proper message, I sent it uh, on Twitter. And she responded me back saying that, hey, how about you send me an email? And, and, and I was like, okay. So I sent her an email and next day she told, told me that she has slotted me for an interview slot. I didn't even apply online. I just texted her on Twitter and that's how it worked out. So there are opportunities like this. You, you can build your relationship. Uh, other things are like my ex bosses goes to photo where I'm have holding a plaque. Those are my boss. They, those were my boss on campus. They are the one who recommended me to another job where, you know, their, their friend was working and that's how I got another job interview. So relationship is very, very important and build your relationship. And of course, now the question is, how do I do that? If you see all my three slides, these three slides will help you build your network because that's how you're going to find new people. That's how you're going to go on campus network. If you do all those things, that's how you will meet new people and you know be able to network it. Network it. And Roshan is going to talk about how to network on LinkedIn, but on an, like you know, on a very best basic level, just be yourself, be kind, be empathetic, and I think just just make friends and make relationship just like that. Uh, so yeah, that's build relationship. Get a mentor. Uh, that's my professor Todd Gibson. is my one of my favorite my favorite professors in Chico State. Uh, he teaches software engineering and a lot of programming classes. So. I think people don't realize uh, uh, how important it is to connect with your professors. Uh, and I realized it when, when I used to go, there's something called office hours and we, we need to utilize that so much there where professors over here are very different. Like I, they are a little different. They want students to succeed in their career. And I realized that that's what these professors are for and that's what their job is. And they really, they feel super happy when some student tell them that I got a job or I got succeeded and whatever that is. So, you know, I told him like, Hey, I would like you to mentor me. So getting a mentor, it doesn't have to be professor. I'm just using that as an example, but it could be your bosses on campus. It could be anybody else, but get a mentor who can guide you for your journey. But professors can be a good starting point for getting a mentor on campus. Uh, they, they, they 
So right now we are hiring in so far software engineering position. I sent him an email and I sent entire computer science professors email saying like, hey, we are hiring. If you have any student recommendation, tell me. And they recommended a couple of students. They got interview without even applying. That's that is how networking is going to work again. So my he's the one who who put my name in Deloitte competition. I didn't even know about that competition until he is like, hey, I know that you don't like programming or you don't enjoy programming and you want to move to project management and business analyst roles. Uh, here's a competition which you need to, like you should go and maybe I can hook you up with uh, organizers and you can represent Chico State. So you know, I didn't even try. He, because I you know, was very close to him, I went on coffee dates with him, lunch and dinners. He's invited me to his house so many times. Uh, so they can really be a good asset for you. So these are the resources available for you on campus. So make sure you use it. Don't just get assignments and you know uh, keep that professor student relationship. They can, they, there can be more you can do with them. Next one is uh, using uh, resources on campus, which is it ties back to my last point, which one of them is professors, but then you know there are career centers, career fair, networking events. Uh, your college will be organizing a lot of career fairs and a lot of networking events. So, so don't hesitate to go. Like again, my first point is a herd mentality where a lot of my seniors by told me like career fair are not of any use and you know you won't get any job it's it's waste of time let me tell you my current job i got it through career fair i you know it was a computer science career fair i knew that i am not looking for anything but i went around and i met you know excel managers where they were just you know having there and i went and i talked to them i did my research way before i even went to career fair when I went to the career fair, I met them they, and they asked me, what are you looking for? And then I was able to pitch, that's like an elevator pitch, we, we call it. That's where I was able to pitch it that, hey, I am looking for something, a bridge between software developers and a people person. Because software developers can't talk to people and people can't talk to software developers. And I can do both. And I, I want to be, be the bridge between both of them. And that's because I went to career fair, met them, and they are like, you know what? They, they, they were not even hiring for project management uh, internship, but they are like, here's my card, send me an email, and I can get you in touch with project management department. And then I responded. I got an interview call for project management internship, and I luckily I got it, and, and now I'm a project manager for that company. So make sure there are resources like that. Don't ignore them. Um, there might be people who might not believe in this there might be people who will say that it's of no use but again this is your chance opportunity to best chance for you to show your face to hiring managers and recruiters uh, when you apply online you're just going to send a one piece of paper an online application but when you go to career fairs that's where you can present yourself you can express your passion um, networking events is something else uh, my college is organized I'm sure a lot of us uh, will agree that they organize this something where they teach you how to network when a lot of you were asking me how do I build network how do I talk to people how to do small talk these are the things these are the events where your career center your career fair a lot of organizations will be doing that so uh, go and attend those events uh, and career center is something where they they will teach you i went from day one i used to go there and i used to they will they are the one who will help you with your resume building with your linkedin profile with your cover letter all of those things so i went i mean even though it might be not as helpful as you think you might want to but it is better to get another set of eyes on your resume on your profile so make sure you use all of them uh, and I think that's my end of uh, the session. I like to do a lot more Q and A uh, rather than just me talking because I talk a lot in my videos. I would rather take this opportunity to take all the questions. Uh, you know, I always say keep smiling and keep hustling. You gotta hustle every single day. Uh, you have to have to work hard. You really have to work hard. Uh, uh, I, there's just no no alternative. I all I also say hard work beats talent when talent is not working hard so then you might not have a talent right now but if you work hard you can build that talent and and if the talent is not working hard you will win uh, that's that's my you know pitch to you that no matter which college you are on no matter if it is a top ivy league or if it is a bottom college you will be able to make the best out of it if you use the best resources available to you and make the best use of all the resources i guess uh, that's it
for my session and now we can do some q a rob how do you want to do this everyone round of applause. virtual round of applause to yuri uh tell him thank you in the chat um that was awesome um yeah, yeah tell him a big thanks we're gonna do some q a now so we want to talk and do question and answer specifically related to things that um, Yudi just spoke about in this presentation, not about which is the best college for electrical engineering, but things that Yudi talked about. <laughs> so go ahead and put your questions in the Q&A and we're gonna try and help monitor those. All right, Yudi, here's the first one. How can I utilize my connections without feeling opportunistic, uh, like I'm using them to get a job referral? Yeah, I mean, uh, be very genuine. Be, uh, I think you, you have to build your relationship slowly, right? Like you, it's just like a, how you are going on a date. You're not going to ask for marriage on the first date, uh, right? Like you're not going to be like, hey, I want to get married. You're just going to, you're going to start slow. So you have to connect and maybe try provide. I say, I, I use this provide value for free so that you have a leverage on it uh, on, on, on your network. So Maybe be kind to them, maybe see what they need, uh, what can you help them with uh, and provide some free resources, free, your time will be valuable to so do that. And then in return, slowly, 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 you can share what is your passion and that's how you can be an opportunistic. And anybody can add to this if they want to. Uh, Yudi, here's another question for you. Is the university ranking, does that matter a lot when finding a job? And <laughs> along with that, which is more important, the university over the course or the course over the university? So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, one, you know, my university is not top ranking uh, university. And so that should answer your question. Um, like it's, it's, it, it definitely helps. It is a brand value you will get out of it. But if you, if you have that, then that's great. But if you don't have it, it's, it's not a problem. Like it's not something you should be uh, depressed about or be upset about. Uh, and then the second is, I would say, uh, the, you should go for a course over the university because you are spending, you know, fifty thousand dollars, sixty thousand dollars. You don't want to be in a place where you don't, you hate it. Like you don't want to be in a place where, like me, I didn't enjoy computer science. I, you know, I just followed. Like, okay, I've done. There's a traditional path, and I just kept doing it. Uh, and and then I did not enjoy it. So I would rather choose something which you are passionate about and choose those courses. Mm. Someone talked about on-campus housing versus off-campus housing, which will be help build more better for exposure and the experience that you're kind of encouraging on-campus versus off-campus housing. Yeah, I think most of the master's students will, will be off-campus and it's way cheaper. Uh, if you, it's like, if you have money and if you want to experience that dorm life and be, get that exposure of, with students, you can definitely decide to be on campus, but I prefer off campus. And if you follow all those things, like getting all on campus and going to competition and conferences, you will by default get all those exposures and you don't have to pay a lot of money to be on campus, uh, to live on campus. But undergrad, for undergrad, I, I know uh, you might have to be on campus for first semester or first year. Harunur can talk to it more, but uh, but if that's the case, then I would rather use that as an opportunity to just you know live the experience of dorm life. We've got a few questions here about Professor Zudi. Um, one people are asking just, how do you start connecting and building those relationships with professors? I know Roshni is going to talk about that, but I want to hear your thoughts. And then along with that, they asked, do professors help students get referrals in the Fong companies like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google? Yeah. You know, yeah. Professors help with roles and how do you start relationships with them? First is there's, uh, uh, you know, professors over here will be willing to help you. They will go above and beyond. Uh, they will not stick to nine to five job. Uh, mm -hmm. I've had the, my professors Todd and Kevin, like, you know, I've had professors where I had problems. Uh, they would sit uh, for like hours and hours to discuss with me and kind of help me guide my career. So I think it's as simple as just going and talking to them. It's really just as simple as just going and sharing like, hey, I want to share something with you and go to maybe their office hours and then say, I don't want to take up a lot of your office hour time because a lot of other students might have uh, things, but can I you know, get an appointment to just you know, share things with you? And then you just go and talk to them and obviously don't sound that like I'm doing this because I want to get a job. It's just mm -hmm. more of you sharing something like right now you're asking things like that. Just ask them the same things and, and talk to them. They will be more than happy to help you. And then the, yes, the answer is yes. The professors do help in, uh, 
uh, referring to students to FANG companies because a lot of companies will reach out to professors uh, asking for recommendations, like just I said in my presentation. So if you are like if, if you have a good relationship with your professors, more likely you will be recommended to that company. So yeah. We'll do a couple more questions before we transition to Roshni. Um, one is about on-campus jobs. Yudi, is it possible for people to get on-campus jobs even before they come to America? And then second question is, what about people discriminating, discriminating against Indians? Is there much discrimination against Indians or international students in America? For second one, I, I'll just say straight away, no. At least for in, in my universities, there was I've never faced anything in my area. I've never seen anybody discriminating against me or my community or Indian community or international student community. So I have not seen anything like that or have personally experienced it. Uh, so that's that but the first one is absolutely you can uh, so you you totally can i if you get an admit you will most likely get an uh, email address from your college i have a template uh, on my website go and just apply that template uh, send out emails to professors that you are passionate about doing tara jobs if you are that's what you want to do uh, that's one of the ways i have had one of my friend in who was with my batch he got a job as a software developer position and when he reached out to some of the on-campus uh, resources. So it is totally possible. I found one more good question here for you. Hey, Yudi, really nice session. How do you regularly keep in touch with the people you connect? Um, I mean, it would sound opportunistic if you connect the, contact them once in a blue moon. So what's how do you do that ongoing relationship with networking and connections? My answer would be, how do you do it with your friends? Uh, you know, it's just don't be... Uh, don't keep that in your head. Like, be genuinely interested in in making that relationship. Uh, that's what I would say. Like, I'm genuinely interested in making a relationship with uh, Rob, in, for example. And I would like, you know, maybe text once in a while, talk to him once in a once a week or once a month. Uh, just keeping that as simple as just doing that. It's not like high, you know, rocket science where you have to go above and beyond and send gifts and all. Just as simple as sending one email, like, hey, just checking in. How are things with you in coronavirus? Hope uh, you and your family are staying healthy. You were there in my, like, when I was thinking about you. That email will go a long way. Like, now, it, all of a sudden, you build that, you know, empathy and kindness in my heart. And now, like, I want to know more of you. So I'll respond back. So that's as simple. Like, those are the simple things you can do. It's just how you keep your friendship alive. Uh, so it's very similar to that. Okay. You, we've got a, a couple of really good questions that are same. So we'll do this last one for you. Um, yeah. So your questions are, so you'd be going to a university with a small class size. Would that be better than going to a university with a huge class size, even if it's a bit highly ranked? And also they said, someone else said similarly, as you suggested, university is not so crowded, but I've heard that companies prefer local students more often. So less companies in cities with less job opportunities. What are your thoughts on the class sizes and, you know, the city sizes for those things? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's a, it's hard to say, uh, like it's case by case, like, yes, absolutely. Like Chico State is a small town. It has like maybe four to five tech companies and doesn't have a, a lot of companies. So I knew that I'm going to do anything it takes to get a job, on, like to get a job. I'm going to work like super hard, extra hard. I, I know I'm going to go all in uh, and I'll get a job. So for me, I had that confidence and belief in me. But if you don't have that and if you feel a little like, you know, I don't want to take that risk, uh, yeah, maybe go to San Jose State because it's in the middle of Silicon Valley, in the heart of Silicon Valley. You, you will be where every other street has a startup company. So uh, in that case, yes, the class size are bigger, but also opportunities are very big over there. So it's making the balancing out like what what is like self-aware is what more important. Like what do you think about yourself and if you feel confident and all those things. I think I mean you know it's a little it's a little complicated to just give one answer. <laughs> I need to understand a lot more to give you like uh, direct uh, answer. Thanks so much for watching. We hope this video is really helpful to guide you guys in your journey to success. There's a couple ways you guys can say thanks. One is filling out the feedback form, whether the link is in the description. That's going to help us put on more webinar events like this. Don't forget to subscribe to the channels of all the presenters to show your support and help us to help you guys. And lastly, connect with us on LinkedIn. Don't forget to tag us. You can recommend us. We really want to help you guys out in your journey to success here in America. Cheers.